Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a single barrel von Star Ward, Australian whiskey. This was distilled in June of 2017. This was bottled on the 15th of September 2022. It is a five-year-old whiskey, cast number 9166. It is only for Germany, for Kirsch import. And it is one of 229 barrels. Now, I'm just going to put this over here a little bit. Pour, put this over here because we have some other bottles coming in a second. 48.3% ABV. It is non-chilled filtered and cast strength. Cast strength. 48.3% 48 after five years. Now, if I'm going to read this, I would just like us to understand what's going on here. First of all, it is a modern whiskey. This whiskey was first filled into a French wine, it's a fr fresh red wine barrel in June of 2017. Now, Star Wars actually got a nice little injection of money from Diageo in 2015. They moved where their distilling was in Melbourne, a little bit down over outside um, to the harbor, to a nice area there. They have a wonderful um, two stills. I'm one wash still, one pot still. Most of the time, I know that they're making most other places on one pot still, one spirit still, are making 250,000 liters a year. They could make up to 350,000 running 24 7 apparently, have uh, the, um, just the capacity to do that. So that's just fine. And um, if you look at the different barrels, you will see they start off in the, in the there was like one, two, and then goes up to hundreds and thousands, and then 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, six, there's not many, seven, eight, and nine, and ten, there's a lot. All right, and then after that, they did other ones. So this is a, for Star Wars, this is a fairly old whiskey with 2017. Now, why did they choose to actually fill it into a different cask after only basically 18 months? All right, so we have June 2027, and then we have January 2019. It was transferred to a maple syrup cask. My first question is, um, according to my research online, this was a Heaven Hill cask that had held whiskey, not whiskey, had, that had held honey, and even that's wrong, that had held maple syrup. Well, Jason, I got everything wrong there. All right, that had held maple syrup for nine months. My question is that I don't know is where. Was that maple syrup in Canada? Was that maple syrup in America? Was that maple syrup in Australia? Now let's just propose for a moment it was America. So you have a nice Heaven Hill cask, been used once for bourbon, it's the first filled bourbon. You put honey in it for nine months, very, very good. You scrape it out and you have now have a cask, bourbon cask matured honey which seems to honey, I'm sorry, I'm constantly saying honey, maple syrup. All right, so you have a maple syrup, a barrel aged maple syrup cask. Now, what do you do with that cask? How do you get it from America to Australia without it spoiling? Is there any spoilage in maple syrup casks? I really don't know. Is there a big, apparently there's a massive market at the moment for maple syrup casks. I've had at least eight different maple syrup products and every single one of them were like, I can do better by just putting maple syrup in my own whiskey myself. That was my entire, my entire philosophy up to this whiskey. Now this whiskey was pushed on me by the brand ambassador over here in Germany. We have here um, Lucas Andreas Werner. And um, we were at a fair together in, I think it was Limburg, actually. I had my booth here. His booth was across the aisle. And at the beginning of the, the fair on the first day, he said, Jason, you have to try my maple cask um, whiskey. I was like, no, thank you. I've had too many. And it was like, yeah, you have to try it. It's really good. It's like, I've had so many maple cask, maple syrup cask finished whiskeys products. No, thank you. He said, no, no, this is different. I said, no, thank you. He said, well, I'm going to give you something. So he found a glass. He brought the glass over. He gave it to me. I said, oh, thank you. Can't say no now, can you? 
I smelled it. I was like, hey, wait, that's different. He said, I told you. I was like, yeah, that's different. And he's like, okay, thank you. So, and this does not smell like you poured maple syrup into it yourself. It smells like it's highly integrated into the whiskey, just like a rum, a port, a sherry, um, a wine finish should be. And this wasn't just a quick finish, all right? So to keep, continue reading, January 2029, or 2019, it was refilled into this um, X Heaven Hill maple syrup cask. And this was actually then distilled, uh, it was bottled in September 2022. So we have here almost three and a half years in a maple syrup cask. 18 months in the red wine, three and a half years in the maple syrup. I like this. Now, what can I compare it to? Over here, I do have a second single cask bottling for Kirsch in Germany. This is going to be our barrel number 10356. And this is first aged in a fresh red wine barrel from the famed Barossa Valley before finishing in a charred American oak hogshead. So first of all, hogsheads aren't really um, used in bourbon. So you had to make that hogshead. Do they actually make their own hogsheads in um, Australia? I'm going to say no. What I'm going to say has happened is we took a couple bourbon barrels, sent them over to um, Scotland. Scotland remade them into a hogshead, used them for I don't know how many decades. And then when they were done with it, they sent that used hogshead over to Australia. So it went from the U.S. to Scotland to Australia. And they recharged, they rejuvenated that hogshead. That's what it says here, basically, all right? So that's what I'm reading. It says here, in a charred American oak hogshead. All right, so I didn't, it does not say the word recharred, but it might be. And what I'm going to compare it to, oh, so lastly is, what I really, I like these old boxes of Star Wars, even better than new ones. A little bit more um, standard, the black I really liked. If you didn't know where Melbourne is, you now know where it is. On the back, they put a nice little label for the information here. This is also a single barrel from Star Wars. So I'm going to have three single barrels here. And um, the information here is a little bit less here. It says barrel number um, 10323, 55.7. Here we were at 56.7. And here we're at 48.3. So that's that there. And... Um, on the back, it does say a tiny little bit of information over here. It does say, um, first aged in a fresh red wine barrel from the famous Barossa Valley before finished in a charred American oak barrel. So, now, if you're looking for the whiskey base numbers, I will give them all to you. So this was 22842. This over here um, is then um gotta get the right button numbers here this is 229593 and this right here it was for a germany exclusive for vic this is 188855 so three eights and two fives and a one at the beginning so they all run between 190 euros for a single barrel this is four years old this was bottled 2021 this is four years old this was bottled then in um, also 2021, and this was bottled in 2022. So four, four, five. So if we look at the colors here, we'll see they're almost the same. This has a little bit of a darker red. This has a little bit more of a brown hue going on in there, but they're all just basically almost the same here. So let's just put a little bit of space in between here. I like more red wine and more oak, a little bit more pungent, a little bit more um, sharp, a little bit more alcohol. By the way, they do have a nice little thing here. It says here we have sugar glazed, vanilla, and raspberry. I don't think I've ever gotten the raspberries here. Here we have our yellow 
peach, our pineapple, and our oak. And what's really, really interesting is on the entire front side of the bottle, there's no mention whatsoever of maple syrup. Remember, 18 months in red wine, three and a half years in maple syrup casks. It says single barrel um, Australian whiskey matured for five years in red wine barrels. That's wrong. It was not even for five years in red wine barrels. All right, so this label is incorrect. A maple syrup barrel is not a red wine barrel. A Heaven Hill barrel is not a red wine barrel. This was matured for 18 basic months in a red wine barrel in the last three and a half years. And it does say so on the back here. It says here, the red wine, 2017. It does mention then January 2019. It does mention the rest was, and it says here, maple syrup, orange, and red apple. So, and I'm really, really interested in the amount of alcohol angel share that was involved here. It says cast strength, non-chilled filtered cast strength. All right, so 56.7, almost 400 bottles, 396. Over here, the Vic, we have here 240 with 55.7. And over here, we have 229 um, with 48.3%. Hmm, that's really, really interesting. What's going on there? I don't know. Either they cut it down with water, hope not, or there was something special going on with that high, with that uh, maple syrup finish barrel. Let's try it. Cheers. At 48.3%, it's got a little bit of heat that I just don't want. So I add a little bit of water. It's got some good sweetness going on here. Now, my brain does not actually tick this in my brain as a maple syrup cask. It ticks it more as a honey. Um, it ticks it more as a rum. So, now, I don't think there has been any scotch matured in a maple syrup cask. Why not? Because it's not the traditional way of doing things. The single malt scotch, I'm sorry, single malt, the Scotch Whiskey Association, SWA, can basically forbid you from using our maple syrup. Now, that might change in the future because everyone's doing it every place else. In Germany, in America, Australia, in Canada, in Denmark, and, and every, every place else I'm going. I'm going to look, maple syrup, maple syrup, maple syrup, finished. <sighs> but this is very well done. This is going to be a C plus whiskey. With water, it might actually go up to B minus. Hmm. Just a little bit of whiskey, just a little bit of water takes the sh the edge off the sharpness of that of the whiskey. Mm, very nice. As I said, C plus plus, maybe even B minus minus on a good day for the for the taste. Value for money, that was a 90, almost 90, 90. I'm going to say C minus minus. I cannot recommend you go out and search for this bottle and buy it without trying it. This is five years of age. This is 20, almost 20 euros per year of maturation. That's way too much. 65, I would be halfway comfortable recommending it. 55, I would be even more comfortable. You understand where the, the projection, the tra trajectory is going. Um, but 90 euros, that's a little bit steep. If you're in Germany, go to Whiskey Fair, find my friend Lucas Andreas Werner and say, hey, Jason said the Star Wars single cask maple syrup is awesome. Let me try it. And if it's as good as... Jason says it is, I'll buy a bottle and take it home. And if you don't like it, you don't have to buy the bottle, you have to pay for your dram and everyone's happy. Find a sample, find a dram, figure out if this is something for you. Now this one, the standard here with our, from Kirsch from this year basically. Now it was bottled 2020. This is what's really confusing me. This was bottled 2021, but yet it arrived in Germany basically 2023. This has hardly any 
people voting for it. This is somehow a little bit of a secret bottle that I have here. I feel the alcohol is a little bit better integrated here, yet the red wine, the tannins come through stronger. I'm going to underscore the word oak, the yellow peach, but not the pineapple. And last but not least, this was actually also in Germany and it was released in July of 2021. One of the first bottles back then to even reach the shores of Germany with 55.7%. Mm. Not only is the red wine influence stronger, the tannins are stronger, the alcohol is stronger. 55.7 uh, versus here, 56.7. This feels older, this feels younger and less mature. This feels the best. The 48.3 diluted down just a tiny little bit with that maple syrup. Um, wow. I'm, I'm happy. Two questions a day. What is your favorite maple syrup finished product in the world? Mm -hmm. And number two, what is your favorite Australian, Australian bottling in the world? Please write down both or either or of the answers in the chat below. Whiskey Jason here saying thank you very much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell others. And if you need to contact me, whiskeyjason at gmail.com. All the best. Bye-bye.